We're here at E3 and we're in the Room of Reckoning, I guess. <laughs> yes, with Ian here who's uh, showing off Reckoning to journalists and retailers and everyone who's fortunate enough to get in line uh, in this beautifully designed room. Uh, what are you guys showing here at E3? So Reckoning is, we're pretty excited to show it. It's uh, the particular demo we're showing today just shows a little tiny sliver of the game, but it's a massive open world RPG featuring intense action combat fused to a backbone of hardcore RPG systems. It's very, very big. Um, it's coming for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC in 2012. And that's just trying to get people excited about it. <laughs> we are, we are, we are. And then uh, what, what do you feel is, is particular about Reckoning if you compare it to other open world M RPGs? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things. One is the loot system. We have a loot system you, you, norm you normally would only see in like a hack and slash game. So we have countless affixed items it can make and a whole lot of handcrafted unique items. That's one thing. The next thing is the combat. We have combat that we believe is truly better than any other combat in an RPG. It's a big statement, I know, but we believe it. It takes a lot of pages from the action game playbook, but it builds it all on a foundation of a normal RPG with player choice being the thing that drives your experience. The other thing is the destiny system, which is my personal baby, so I love it very much. The destiny system is kind of the way we handle class in Reckoning. So as the game begins, instead of saying, I'm going to be a paladin and then being stuck with that for the rest of the game, you start with no class or destiny at all. And then over the first oh, hour or so of the game, you can experiment with different play styles, and then you can invest points in whatever seemed cool to you in that time, and the game will give you a destiny, which is essentially your class. As you progress through the game and make more choices, invest points in more things, you'll unlock and upgrade more and more destinies, and through the entire game to the very last minute, you can keep changing around what you're using. So you can go from being a hybrid mage rogue into being a pure warrior halfway through the game. And you're not being penalized for that, sort of? Not at all. I mean, you can, you can choose, if you choose to be, say, a pure mage, you're going to have more access to the highest level mage skills than someone who is a hybrid. But you're not going to be bad at the game because you chose to spread your points around. You're just going to be different. You're going to have hybrid abilities that nobody else has. Yeah. I think uh, that's one of the things. When you design a game like that and you, you build out the, the, the combat and everything, you do so much that, the, you know, most players, I don't know how the, what the spread is in an RPG, but you know, typically you would pick a warrior type mm -hmm. style player because that's what you're familiar with. You've mm -hmm. played it before, and then you wouldn't experience all the magic. You wouldn't mm -hmm. experience all the all the all the cool things that you you've designed. But mm -hmm. in this game, you will be able to sort of pick and choose, and you don't have to lock in for the duration. It's true. It's been cool in our, our playtests. We do a lot of playtests in the game, try to get things you know where the player actually likes them and not just the designer. And normally, you're right. Warriors tend to be the thing that a lot of people pick. We found in our testing, though, because of the way that the Destiny system works, it's a lot more. It's almost exactly one-third, one-third, one-third people spread between the three different kind of trees or hybrids between those trees. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be working pretty well as far as making that work. Can you talk us through a little bit about the design choices? Because I think uh, that's at least what I think of is, is a little bit like World of Warcraft. Oh, you mean like the art style? The art style. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to achieve with the art style and what do you feel that it, that it sort of makes it stand out on its own? So we wanted it to be colorful. We wanted it to be saturated, rich, and vibrant. Because a lot of games in this generation, they're, they're brown, and that's the gritty, and that, that has its place. We wanted to do something different, something that was a little more alive. So the color, that's largely it. Now, certain specific areas are, are toned very differently. So like the stuff we showed in this demo, uh, a little bit darker in this you know, cave area, obviously. The early parts of the game, Dalentarth, the first zone that we've shown in previous demos, it's very bright and very sunny and very rich. And that's because of something that R.A. Salvatore, kind of our big story guy, uh, has pushed on us real hard. We want to make the game a world that the player wants to save, a world worth saving. So we want to have places that are beautiful, not to feel like it's like, well, might as well save the world because I have no choice, but like, it's pretty, it's beautiful, it's sunlit, and you want to save it. So there's sort of both the design and art reasons behind the colors. Have you, have you talked any more about the fate shift system at all? This is actually the first time we've talked about the system here at E3. Uh, before, we've kind of shown them, but we didn't talk about how they work. And uh, I mean, do you want to know a little bit more about them? 
Definitely. All right, so fate shifts. Because you have this weird relationship between fate and, rec fate and destiny, rather, and the player character, you have powers over fate that nobody else has. So as you defeat enemies, just kill them outright, or if you perform well in combat, like if you're mixing up your attacks and doing you know, a spell, and then this special dagger attack, and then this and then that, you're going to earn more and more fate energy, these thin threads of fate that zip to the player character. As you get more and more of that, once you have enough, you can enter into a special mode called, the name of the game, Reckoning. In Reckoning mode, you become incredibly powerful, you're very hard to kill, time slows down, you speed up, you do a lot more damage, you're just all-purpose badass. And in that mode, when you defeat guys, they don't just die. Instead of dying, they drop down, these threads come out as they start to unravel, like their fates are actually sort of fraying and coming apart. Then you can run up to one of them and fate shift them. It's just an interaction where you start doing this cool animation, you're flying in the air and you're you know, puncturing the guy with these weapons made of fate energy. And once you do this, it'll destroy that guy and every other enemy that you've gotten unraveling. So you can take out like, you know, 10 guys at once with this move and you get a big XP bonus across all of them. So if you can do it within the time frame because you've limited time in Reckoning, it's you know, strategically to your advantage to get all of them unraveling at once and then fate shift the last one and just wipe them all out. So that's going to be a very strategic thing to when to start that yeah. and when to sort of execute that. Yes, and definitely for, for a melee character, it's, you know, you're running all over the battlefield, and for a more range-based guy, it's a different experience. You know, if you're a mage, you have a lot of AoE attacks, and it's basically depending on your build, how you're trying to make Reckoning happen may be very different. But for everybody, it's something you want to happen. Yep. So one final question. I think we're running out of time. Uh, where are you at in development right now? And, and uh, I know you're aiming for two th two 2012, mm -hmm. but... Uh, could you tell us a little bit where you're at? So we're at a pre-alpha stage right now, so we still have months, but not years, of debugging and polishing left ahead of us. I can tell you that. I can tell you that's coming 2012. I can tell you that we're already at this point in playtesting, getting extremely positive reactions from everybody we've run through the games. We're excited, but I can't tell you exactly how much time is left, I'm afraid. Sometime in 2012. All right. Thank you very much for your yeah, time. Thank you.